In this video, you're going to learn about code dependencies and how dependency injection can improve your C-sharp code. We are not just talking about it, we also write some code. And now let's learn about dependency injection in C-sharp. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years experience on the .NET platform. My passion for learning and sharing knowledge, as well as helping other developers improve, are the reason I started this channel. Before we jump right into it, I want to make sure that you understand what you get from watching this video. To make things simple, we first take a look at what a code dependency is. Next, I want to make sure that you understand how dependency injection works and why applying it can improve your code. In the last part of this video, we are going to implement a simple solution from scratch without using any framework so that you can understand and implement this example step by step on your own. And now let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at the following example to make sure we understand what the code dependency is. In this case, we have a user clause with a username property and a changed username method. We also have a notification service property, which holds a reference to an instance of the console notification class. The console notification class is responsible for writing a changed username to the console. In other words, we say the user class has a dependency on the console notification class. Code like this can be found in any business application mostly in a more complicated fashion. To keep things simple, we stick to this straightforward example in this video, but the concept also applies to more complex scenarios. We use this simple console application using the classes just talked about before. In the main method of the program class, we create a user called Tim and change its name to Robert using the changed username method. The user class has a simple constructor accepting the username as its argument. Further, we create an instance of the console notification class and assign it to the notification service field of the user class. We also have a username property and the change username method which calls the notification service. The console notification class has a single method called notify username changed, accepting a user object as its argument. The current implementation of the method simply writes a message to the console. If we start the program, of course the output in the console says the username has been changed to Robert, as we expected. Now, let's take a look at the code dependency in our code. In the user class, we have the notification service field which holds a reference to an object of the type console notification. The user class depends on the console notification class. You might ask yourself, why is having a code dependency a problem? In general, having code dependencies is not a problem. Of course, we have different classes in our applications, which all work with each other. Without communication between our classes, our code would have to fit in a single class. We all agree that this is not something we want. But what is the actual problem? The actual problem is that the user class as a domain type has a dependency on a small technical detail. In a bigger system, the user class will be used in different spots in the entire application. Also, there will be completely different reasons for us to change either the user class or the notification system. Therefore, we want to make sure that the user class is not affected by changes to the notification system. How do we fix our code? The first step is to make sure we depend on an abstraction rather than an implementation. This is one of the basic rules of object-oriented design and often defined as the dependency inversion principle. The dependency inversion principle states that high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. Abstractions should not depend on details and details should depend upon abstractions. To follow this principle, we create an abstraction for the console notification class. In C Sharp, we use interfaces to create abstractions, and therefore we implement an I notification service interface. The only method in this interface is the notify username changed method, accepting a user object as its argument. Next, we change our console notification class to implement our new notification service interface. Because the method signature matches the implementation of the console notification class, we do not have to make any further code changes. In the user class, we can now change the type of the notification service property from console notification to I notification service. Great. But wait, we still have a dependency on the console notification class. 
the constructor of the user class still creates an instance of the console notification class. We can remove this dependency by using dependency injection. First of all, we create a new constructor argument for the user class. This argument is of type iNotificationSeries. Next, we need to fix our code in the program class. The user class now needs a second argument in its constructor. To fix the program class, we create an instance of the console notification class and pass it to the constructor of the user class. We just made use of dependency injection. We inject an instance of the console notification class as a notification service to the user class. Let's recap what we just did. Let's take a look at our classes in another class diagram. Now both of our concrete classes depend on an abstraction. The user class and the console notification class both depend on the iNotification service interface. Let's say we want to notify the system not only by writing the changed username to the console, but also call a web service to notify other applications. We can easily create a new implementation of the iNotification service interface and the only code file we need to change is our program class. Everywhere in our application where we use the notification service, the implementation defined in the program class will be used. This example is very simple and we only have a single consumer of the notification service. In bigger applications, there could be many consumers, even hundreds or more. The more classes you have in your program, the more complex it becomes. You have to define the implementation for every abstraction in your application. This can become a huge mess. This is where dependency injection frameworks come into play. In the next video, I will take it to the next level by explaining how to use a dependency injection framework and I will show you how we can integrate that framework into our example program. Feel free to ask questions about this video in the comments, give me some feedback and if you like this video please hit the like button below. See you in the next.